the bumblebee, when he starts to beat his wings, when he starts to flap his wings, there's a little cavity, a hollow cavity next to the larynx inside his, his system that's hollow. And when he beats his wings, he starts to resonate this energy, and it goes back and forth, just similar to, um, to a guitar strumming on one side of the room and hitting the same chord on the other side of the room, or uh, somebody hitting a high C and breaking a crystal. It's the same thing. It's resonance. And he said, what they do, they resonate. And when they resonate, they eventually reach the resonance of the field around them. And he explained it this way to me, that the earth was, of course, spinning, but it was, it was operating on a frequency of 8.5 hertz per second or so forth. And he says, once this bumblebee hits that resonant frequency of its surroundings, it becomes a free agent. It creates a magnetic bubble around itself, and it can go anywhere it wants. And I said, well, that's not in any of the science books. He said, I know. <laughs> You, know, you probably never see it there either, but that's, that's what happens. They'll discover it someday and bring it out, but it, it's just uh, we have a conventional way of doing things and we have a natural way of doing things, and they're totally different. They're diametrically opposed. The important point here is the bees. As you've heard, the bumblebee shouldn't really be able to fly. Those wings are way too small to lift that chubby little body off the ground. In fact, it's a bit of a conundrum also for the mainstream scientists. They can travel in perfectly straight lines for long distances without any deviation, even during a howling crosswind. Because of the resonant frequencies produced by the vibration of their wings, they create a bubble in the ether, protecting them from any outside interference.